North Korea's troubled present and tightly controlled borders make it a difficult and impossible destination for even the most intrepid travelers. Can't travel independently, all tourists are accompanied by a guide from Kemenpar. However, North Korea has appealed to tourists in recent years, talking about the legacy of the ever-sleeping founder Kim Il-sung and his son Kim Jong-il. From the ruins in Kaesong to the Palace of the Sun Kum Susan to the Pyongyang Mausoleum. The beautiful Paradise Lake on the border of China is a natural wonder like nothing else in Asia. Hey guys, welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video, we will tell you about why traveling to North Korea is impossible. Please subscribe to our channel if you want to travel without having to endlessly wait until others are ready to grow. Now let's get started. Going to North Korea finances their nuclear program, military and regime. Not really but firstly, remember that foreign tourism is a small part of North Korea's GDP, about 0.3%. And secondly, our country's foreign-sponsored tour operator is not controlled by any North Korean military or elite organization. Therefore, with a total annual income of only about $40 million, tourism mainly depends on tourism, hotels, restaurants, staff, operators, transport, and political organizations that control tourism operators, National Tourism Administration, Ministry of Sports, Korea Taekwondo Association, Youth League and even some investment companies, etc. Indirectly, you could argue that because tourism requires the purchase of things like jet fuel, it could provide indirect funding to the Air Force. But that's the best argument, most of these are already subsidized by other government agencies. Everything is staged and it's like visiting a Potemkin village. Mostly untrue but the main tourist spots and monuments are irregular and organized because they respect the ideology and leadership of the state and are places of pilgrimage for local residents. These places are heavily recorded by local guides so that visitors can hear their version of the country's importance and again are aimed more at local visitors than foreign tourists. Local is not included anywhere to be more complete or functional for foreigners. North Korea does not have the means to do so. Locals visiting the main pilgrimage sites are mostly organized by the business department, so it seems to be built, or rather should be organized, to visit this place of national importance. Also, people in the streets and villages are just living their lives and not placed there to entertain foreign tourists. There are model communities that the government likes, so many farms, factories, and cooperatives visited by tour groups are not average, but represent ideals. You will not have access to anyone or anything that is not part of your authorized tour. While most tours are pre-planned and pre-arranged activities, there is room for occasional and natural interactions with the locals. Of course, this interaction will be easier if you can speak Korean, because many guides, especially junior guides, are a little hesitant to translate the conversation for fear of getting into trouble or answering too many questions. They attract a lot of attention to themselves in public. Americans are not allowed to go to North Korea. Americans were previously able to travel to North Korea as tourists, although there were some restrictions. Until 2010, Americans could only visit the Ararang Summer Games, but from 2010 to 2017, Americans could visit all year round. The previously enforced restrictions limit the ability of Americans to participate in direct exchanges with DPRK citizens, have direct contact with North Korean individuals in the DPRK, and travel by train between Sinuiju and Pyongyang. However, starting in September 2017, the U.S. government decided to limit the ability of Americans to travel to the DPRK with a U.S. passport. Dual American citizens can try to use another passport. After several high-profile arrests, U.S. citizens in North Korea. U.S. citizens need a special passport to travel to North Korea, and these are issued only on a limited basis other than for tourism. Traveling to North Korea is extremely dangerous, not really. North Korea is not a particularly dangerous location, there is essentially no violent crime and even pickpocketing is extremely rare. However, you must be aware of local laws and customs. Every foreigner arrested or detained in North Korea broke their rules. Their arrests, while unfortunate, were not arbitrary. Most crimes foreigners risk committing are political in nature as the Kim family is held to the utmost respect and any poster, image, slogan, and book is treated as holy. Touching, standing on, imitating, or damaging any of these politically holy images or statues will certainly result in problems. 
punishments may range from having to write a formal apology letter to arrest, extended detainment, and hard labor. The second type of crime foreigners have been arrested for is proselytization. Your conversations are bugged in North Korea. While every location is certainly not bugged, it is safe to assume that areas where foreigners and North Koreans congregate may be bugged. This includes hotel restaurants and bars in particular. Ethnic Koreans are not welcome in North Korea. It's wrong. Ethnic Koreans with non-Korean passports are very welcome in North Korea and treated better than the average foreign visitor. North Koreans will immediately bond with you and, according to the state's ideology, want you to return home as part of the larger Korean state. Ethnic Koreans must fill out an additional statement when applying for a North Korean visa that asks about their family history and place of birth. Koreans born in South Korea with non-ROK passports are allowed to travel to North Korea as tourists with no additional discrimination. Korean speakers can and should speak Korean when in North Korea. It will be easier to make meaningful connections with local people. You are forced to bow to statues of the North Korean leaders. You are not forced to bow, instead you are politely asked to stand while your guide bows. Of course, they will encourage you to submit, like all North Koreans, but even if you feel pressured to do so, it is not an obligation. Tourism does not help normal North Koreans. This is a tough one. We're first going to have to define normal, and then help as touristic activities are very structured. Most of the financial resources do not end up helping low-income families directly. Rather, tourism largely benefits upper-middle class, educated North Koreans who have found a job in the industry. In turn, these people spend the foreign currency they earn in local free markets, which then benefits working-class people. In North Korea, foreign currency is king. Tourism's impact on average citizens may indeed be limited, but even the presence of tourists has an effect on local people from all walks of life. The indirect effects of tourism may be larger in terms of impact than the direct ones. To not travel to North Korea because of the risk of arrest and long-term detention of U.S. citizens. Beware of North Korea because of the risk of wrongful arrest. That's all from today's video. Please let us know your opinion about the video in the comment section. And if you want to get even more empowered to travel, you need to watch the video in the pinned comment below. Thank you.